Hey guys, this is Eric Weingrunner with Weingrunner Racing. Today's video is uh, three different LS heads that I'm going to flow, and they're all stock. And you guys can get an idea of um, what they flow stock and some different things about them. So let me tell you what three ones I got, and I'll tell you kind of how I got them. One of these I got, this one right here, it is a 706 casting. It's made for the 4.8 liter. And I got this from a buddy of mine, and he sent this to me for free, a pair of them. So maybe I'll get to modify these and play around with them and see what happens when I go kind of crazy on them to see what could go. But that might be later videos. That's what this one is. This one is an 862. Now, it's a 4.8 liter head just like this. As a matter of fact, they look really close, but there's some few differences, at least if I can visually tell. I should point out, by the way, I'm not a stock LS uh, guy expert by any stretch of imagination. Uh, most of the LS heads I see are actually the 243s or the um, LS3 heads. Rarely do I see these much, besides maybe some 706s occasionally. So I'm saying this because you'll see some other ones. Oh, and the 317. So anyway... Uh, you probably have more knowledge on some, some of you will put in the comments a whole bunch of stuff that I had no idea about, which is fine. I'm just showing you some of the stuff and I'm going to flow them and see what happens. So anyway, this is an 862. It's really similar to the 4.8 with some differences and we'll go through in just a minute. And this one I got, this is an interesting one. There's a machine shop here in Tulsa and they do a lot of um, warranty work. So like a dealership, say you bought, I don't know, like a Silverado and it had a 4.8 liter uh, V8 in it. And let's say something goes wrong with it and they have to have it repaired. They usually bring them to this machine shop and this machine shop will rebuild them and then send them back or fix them and whatnot. Well, occasionally they'll get a bunch of heads that just aren't very good you know, or the customer just doesn't want to invest anymore with it. And that's how I picked up these 862s and these. Now, this is a set of 317 heads. Now, these ones I know more about because I've probably seen more of this head than I have anything besides the 243 and the LS3 heads. These are off a six liter, um, the early generations of the six liters anyway. They are cathedral port, not to be confused with the um, rectangular port of the LS3s. Um, these have a very large chamber. I'm not sure of the exact CC size, but they are pretty big and far larger than these two. And by the way, they're found mostly in the um, six liter stuff. A lot of people like to put them on different things to lower their compression ratio. They'll pick this head because the chamber's big. I've also been asked many times to fill the head down to get the chamber size up from these. For the record, in past, so we'll see here in a second though, in the, uh, usually when I flow this 317 and on my bench, it typically flows the same as a 243 stock. So the disadvantage is the chamber's so big. So anyway, um, let's talk about this one and then we'll get to our other ones. The 317 has a two inch intake valve and a 155 exhaust valve. I have blasted the port I'm gonna flow, so it's got no crud in it that's gonna mess up this one. The reason why this one head I got is because it was cracked, there you go, uh, between the seats. And that, that happens on some, I showed you an LS3 head that had the same thing. With. So uh, anyway, I get to use it. So I can pretty much do whatever I want for the, the so if you have something you wanna see done with this head, just let me know. I've only got the one but I could try some different things. Anyway, that's this 317 head. This 862 head and the 706 head look really close as far as combustion chambers goes. By the way, that's the one I wanna flow, that's why it's cleaner. They look really close. The biggest difference I could tell visually is, see these knots, the 862 has a knot and the 706 doesn't. It's got more of a honeycomb. Also, this is a bigger difference. If you look at the texture of the 862's chamber versus the uh, 706, and no, I didn't do this. It's just how they are. So, uh, yeah. They're a much smoother design, looks like. So it's probably a more refined one. And the reason why I'm flowing both of these, even though they probably have the same port design, it's just probably different casting technology that's done between the two of them, is because occasionally people will claim on the internet that one would be better than the other. Well, we're kind of going to find out, but there's some things to know. This one... The reason why the guy has this one or gave it to me is because the customer didn't want to have a um, larger valves put in it or cut out the seats to put in it because the valve jobs worn out. That's why it's so wide. Not that this one's that much better, but it's definitely better than what this is. That may affect flow numbers, why I'm pointing out. You can definitely tell in the exhaust, that's all 45. That's pretty thick. And compared to this one's pretty wide too. Anyway. This actually is a 155 exhaust valve, but the intake valve is really tiny at 1.89. I 
that's a small intake valve compared to the two inch that comes on the L, um, the 317. However, both of them have the same exhaust valve diameter that I measured. So that'll be interesting. So we're curious to see what happens. Now, I, like I said, I've cleaned up all these. The port that's going to be flowed is clean. The other ones, of course, are dirty and looks horrible. But I actually blasted these and they're as clean as they're going to be for what we're doing for this test. I'm just using stock valves the same way they would be if you got them from the junkyard besides cleaned up. So that's how they're going to be flowed. Now, here's how I'm going to flow them. I'm going to flow them with my super flow flow winch and I'm using a 430 bore. And I know some people are already going to freak out because if you got a 5.3 uh, or even a 4.8, the bore size is much smaller than a 4030. And if you got like a uh, 6 liter, it's like 4.065. So it's bigger. Well, this is the bore size I have. I have a 4.030 and a 4.155. Um, so since this is the smallest one I have, this is what we're using. It gives it a kind of a representation anyway. I am gonna flow on the super flow bench only because this is my squirrel meter. And let me show you what it is, in case you don't know. See that old blade in there? What happens is that the wind, as the wind, as the air comes out of the port, it's gonna turn that blade, and I'm able to measure the swirl that the port has. And I'm, the reason why I wanna float on that is because I'm curious to see if the swirl from this one is dramatically different from the 317. I'm, it's more of a curiosity thing more than anything else. Um, you guys can use whatever information you have from it. I'm just curious. So anyway, I'm going to put these together, flow them, and I'll share the results with you. I'm going to show you the raw numbers, but I thought I'd show a graph representation of the difference between the 706 and the 862 heads. So, uh, let me find my pointer. There we go. Uh, this line up at the top here. So this is the intake one. See this lines here. These are the intake and that's the exhaust. So, this one at the top right here, this is the 706, and this is the 862 below it. Same thing for the exhaust, same thing. However, I will say this line is hard to see, but the 862 is actually better down low, and then up at top, it's not. Now, don't be, I will print off all the raw numbers when I'm done, so you can see all that, but I thought I'd show you. It looks like the 706 is better. And I only took, by the way, from one to seven. So uh, I got to flow the 317, and then I'll print off the raw number so you can look at that. Here are the numbers. Now I'm gonna give you the raw numbers first. So this is the 706 right here, the 862 and the 317. These are the intake numbers at the top and the exhaust at the bottom. I did not flow with an exhaust pipe attached on any of them. If you look at the 706 and the 862, um, they're really close. This 862 is slightly worse, but not by much. I mean, you look right, here about the same, two about at two tenths about the same, three tenths it's you know a few CFM worse, and then about five there, and about seven there. So in about you know another five or whatever. So it's worse. And the same thing kind of happens on the exhaust. I mean it's better right there at two hundred, but then at the other the points it just gets worse, but not by much. They're really really close. The winner on this deal really is a three seventeen. If you look at the 317, it's a 236 at four. These others aren't even close. And then it goes all the way to 254 at five, or yeah, 500 lift. And then it starts backing up on flow. And that's because of an airspeed issue in the port, but a much better, even on the exhaust, which this shocked me because all of them have the same exhaust valve size. And if you look at this, this is the 862 exhaust port, same as the 706. This is what the 317's ones look like. So more of a D port design. And if you look at the flow numbers, peak numbers are about the same, all right? But look here at, say, 400 lift, 155, much better than the rest. So it's really strong in the middle point. Okay, that's the flow numbers. Let's look at the swirl, though. So here are intake numbers, 706, 862, 317. The highest swirl actually came from the 317. It had a peak of 3,900 RPMs. It's negative, which means it's turning counterclockwise, but this is an RPM measurement of how fast that blade inside there is spinning. This is the fastest measurement I've ever recorded from any of the heads I've flowed using the swirl meter so far. That's super fast. But I will say this, on all these, so this one's, this one's the fastest. This is really fast, and the 706 is pretty fast too. However, the lower lift ones, they're not that fast. 
Matter of fact, I have a small block Chevy if I put any of those on there. They're about 500 RPM faster here all the way to about 500 than match their speed. And then these are actually faster from six and 700. Um, so the point I'm trying to say is they don't swirl as much at the lower lifts, but they sure do at the higher lifts. So something to think about. Anyway, it's just interesting. So yeah, the 317 did swirl more than that um, 706 or even the 862. And it is noticeable um, throughout the whole range. Anyway, that kind of just gives you some more information that you can use. Now, I do want to say something first before someone says something wrong. I'm just going to save yourself. These two heads, the 4.8 liters, they do not flow as good as a small block Chevy GM Vortec head, the 906 or 062 castings. I want you to know that because um, a stock Vortec flows like 222. I just want to save yourself in case you want to post something on the internet. People always say all the LS heads outflow all the stock small block Chevy heads. These don't. Not on the intake side. Now, exhaust side, yeah. You can say all LS heads outflow any stock small block Chevy head. That is correct. But not on the intake side. These two are um, actually worse than a 906 head. Um, the 317, though, it destroys it. It's much better than the small block Chevy stuff. Just kind of give you some reference. Anyway, um, hopefully you enjoyed this information. If I had more castings to flow, I'll flow them and share them with you. But just thought I'd share that with you. You guys take care.